it's an honor for me and Marilyn to be here. Marilyn's my wife. She was sort of mom to Whitey and all the other soccer players, some of them who are back here. Uh, I read the book. I'm going to buy a bunch of them, by the way, Whitey, because I, I liked it so much I'm, I'm going to hand them out to past players and friends and you guys did a great job. I'm going to give a little anecdote uh, of Whitey's time there and how it affected me and how it affected IU soccer. In uh, the first, soccer became varsity in Indiana in 1973. In our first few years, we didn't make the NCAA tournament two times of the first three years. Since then, about 40 years, we've made it every year except one. That was 1986. Whitey was injured that year. He was redshirted. We, uh, we had talent, but we didn't have internal leadership. It became a dysfunctional team that underachieved. I didn't know what to do. At one of the meetings we had trying to regroup the team, this guy who's redshirted steps up and gave I mean, he told him the way it was, and he wasn't even playing that year. And as a result of that year and what we realized was missing, I had to do something I'd never done before in my coaching career, and that was dismiss a group of players. Players who were elected as captains, some of them, a couple, three, and leaders, but their idea was, okay, we have rules, just don't get caught if you break them. That was the approach from the leadership of that team, and that trickled down to the field, and we just underachieved. It was the lowest point of my career. No NCAA tournament, had to kick players off the team, the lowest number of wins we ever had at IU, and I said, what's going to happen from here? That year I decided, electing captains from the team is more of a popularity contest. Not always do the best people in terms of leadership get chosen. And I said, for the first time in my career, I am going to appoint captains and I'm going to appoint people who I feel have the qualities of leadership that's needed for a championship caliber pro program. Both of them are here. Weren't you a captain, Bruce? Yes, sir. Weren't you a captain, Whitey? Yes. I don't know why I chose those guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you what, from a team that didn't make the NCAA tournament, had only nine wins. When these guys stepped on that field the next year, Whitey's fifth year, Bruce's fourth, there was a different environment. There was a different feel. The leadership, the positive, the guys bonding. I could feel it as a coach. And we weren't supposed to do that. Well, everybody was saying, well, God, Indiana's done. They didn't make the tournament. They had kicked some of the top players off the team. That team, in 1987, became the number one team in the nation. Number one team in the nation. And a lot of it was due to the great leadership of Whitey and Bruce. If you haven't read the book, you need to read it to get the feel of that alone. That year we lost to Clemson at home in a heartbreaker. We were expected and hoped to win the NCAA tournament and I thought we were the best team but you don't always have it happen. So we didn't win the NCAA championship that year. 1988 the next year we did. And you know at that 
banquet of the championship team in 1988, some of the boys stood up and they said, there's someone here who didn't play on this team, but was as important as any player who did. And that was Whitey Capsalis. No one deserved to be on the field more than Whitey. No one felt the pride of the uniform more than Whitey. No one was a better leader in my coaching career than Whitey. I'm very proud of him.